Naming a means follows the pattern used for other functional groups. One approach is a systematic approach that has a set of rules that lets you name anything. It's always used for complicated structures, structures that have multiple functional groups, and so on. But for simple structures, names that are often called common names typically are used. For amines that have an alkyl group attached, you simply say that name of the alkyl group and then the word amine. It's all one word, like methylamine. If there's two alkyl groups attached, you say both alkyl groups. They're in alphabetical order, all one word, ethyl, methyl, amine. The alkyl groups don't have to be the simple straight chain alkyl groups. Rings are fine too. This is cyclopentylamine. If there are two of the same alkyl groups attached to the nitrogen, then you simply put di in front of it, like diisopropylamine. This is triethylamine. There are three groups attached, all the same. Benzene aromatic amines have their own special common name, aniline, and when there's something else attached to the nitrogen, you simply name it as a substituent. This is N-butylamine. We have to put the N in front of there to say that the butyl group is attached to the nitrogen, not a place on the ring. And we have metachloroaniline. Remember that for disubstituted benzenes, we can use the ortho-meta-para designation for the placement of the two groups relative to each other. If there were more than two substituents, we'd have to go to the systematic name and use numbering for the positions. Some amines have nitrogen as part of the ring itself. These guys are called heterocycles, and there are two structures you should know. Pyridine, it's the six-membered heterocycle that's aromatic. And pyrrole, it's the five-membered heterocycle, and it's also aromatic. Let me show you a few things about the systematic nomenclature of amines. For the simple alkyl amines, Simply name the compound as an alkane, and then drop the E, replacing it with amine. Remember, you're going to have to say where the amino group is, so this is one hexanamine. If there's something attached to the nitrogen as well, we're going to have to say there's a group attached to it and where it is. So we'll use a capital N, N, cyclopentyl, one hexanamine. Naming this as a common name, I told you to call it cyclopentylamine, but using the systematic name, we'll call it cyclopentanamine. Drop the E and replace the E with amine. It's all one word. Again, if there's a substituent on the nitrogen, simply you name the substituent and put a capital N in front of it. It's entirely possible that the amino group will be someplace along the chain other than the first carbon. No problem. Just name the carbon that the amino group is attached to. So up above, we had one hexanamine, but here, it's on the third carbon from the closest end, so we call it three octanamine. And if there's another group attached to the nitrogen, we'll just name it as N-ethyl, three octanamine. Some compounds have two amino groups attached. Not a problem. This has four carbon chain, so we'll call it butane, and amino groups at the 1 and 3 carbons. So it's 1,3-butane-diamine. Notice now we did not drop the E, we just put diamine at the end. And if this were an aromatic compound, we'd do the same kind of thing. This is 1,3-diaminobenzene. And finally, for anilines that have multiple substituents, we'll have to use numbers rather than orthometa para. We'll number the ring starting with the carbon that has the aniline nitrogen attached to it. That's carbon one. And we'll go around the ring in the order that gets us to a substituent quickest. This is on the second carbon. Here the bromine would be on the third. So we'll go around counterclockwise. That makes this the two carbon. And it makes this the five carbon. But there's a third substituent, the isopropyl group. It doesn't have a number. We'll put the capital N in front of it to tell us that the isopropyl group was attached to nitrogen. Notice this is all one word, hyphenated numbers and letters, and we put the substituents in alphabetical order, B, I, N. So this follows a pattern of systematic nomenclature used for other functional groups. The amino group isn't always the highest priority functional group in a molecule. In fact, the amino group is fairly low on the functionality priority list. Take a look. Here's a list of the core functional groups that we see in organic chemistry. Carboxylic acid is the highest priority. Then there are three carboxylic acid derivatives. And then comes aldehyde above ketone, and aldehydes and ketones are above alcohols, and alcohols are above amines. 
the amine functional group is only above alkenes and alkynes, so it's low on the priority list. There are two functional groups that don't have any priority at all, but rather are named as substituents. Ethers are called alkoxy groups, and halides are simply named as substituents. So it's common, if we have multiple functional groups, that the amine functional group is not the highest priority functional group. Let me show you how to name it as a substituent. When it's just a plain old NH2 group, in a molecule that has a higher priority functional group, we're going to call it the amino group. In this case, it's pentanoic acid, and the amino group is at the 4 position, 4-amino pentanoic acid. If we have an alkyl group attached to the nitrogen, that is a methyl amino group. Now, we do not use the capital N, because methyl amino tells you exactly where it is. But we have to put the 4 out in front, like we did in the other molecule, to tell us where that methyl amino group is. Ketones are higher priority than amino groups, so this is 3-amino cyclopentanone. The ketone functionality in a ring is always carbon-1, so we don't have to use that number. And for aromatic compounds like a benzoic acid, this would be the ethyl amino group attached at the meta position. Meta ethyl amino benzoic acid. In this case, the amino group on the aromatic ring is not a substituent, and we call it aniline. But as soon as there's a higher priority functional group attached to the ring, the amino group is a substituent. This is para aminophenol. And when we have three things attached to the ring, we're going to have to switch to the numbering system for the systematic nomenclature. It's a phenol, which is always carbon-1, so we don't have to use that number. We'll number clockwise, because that gets us to a substituent first. That puts the nitro group on the 2-carbon and the amino group on the 4-carbon. But we're putting them in alphabetical order. So the 4-amino comes before 2-nitro. And finally, ammonium salts are very closely related to amines, and we'll talk about naming those too. Benzylamine, once it's protonated, has a positive charge on it, so we call it an ammonium ion. This is benzylammonium bromide. Notice benzylammonium is all one word, and bromide is a word all by itself. If there are two substituents attached to the nitrogen, we'll name them in alphabetical order. Benzylmethyl ammonium chloride. Again, two words, benzylmethyl ammonium and chloride. And if the substituents are the same substituents, we'll call them di, tri, or even tetraalkyl ammonium salts. This is tetramethyl ammonium iodide. So there you have it. If you can name the amines and ammonium compounds I've shown you here, you'll be all set.